One very persistent myth with regard to international development refers to the size of the government, the amount of economic power the government captures of the total national economy and the political party in power, if it's right wing or left wing. So what is the typical, the stereotypical relation? Right wing or left wing, which one of the two traditionally favors a smaller government? Well, traditionally, a right-wing government is seen to call for a smaller government, a more lean government, more involvement of the private sector. And a left-wing government, traditionally, that's how it usually is, is perceived, calls for more state services, more social services, a bigger government, right? So let's look internationally how it actually what the numbers tell us. So we have here in 2007 a right-wing government in the United States, uh, the Republican George W. Bush has been in power, and the United States government was at about 22 percent of the state quota, that means of total GDP, the total money in the economy, the United, United States government managed about 22 percent. So let's put this here as our benchmark. So now let's ask about what's with Canada, socialist Canada. What do you think is the state quota in Canada or was in 2007? Well, it turns out that the state quota is actually less. It was also a right-wing government, but the state quota was less than the United States, less than 20%, even so it's all, all often perceived as a much more socialist system with much more state services. Uh, let's look at some other countries. For example, here we have socialist Europe, we have Merkel, uh, here with almost a state quota of 30%, some other socialist European country with Australia, uh, Italy, and here we have France, also a right-wing government, Sarkozy was in power in 2007, but it has a state quota of almost 45%. So it's a very different uh, economic system that's in place in, in these countries, in these European countries, than in North America. Uh, let's have a look at some left-wing countries. For example, some countries that are or some governments that are traditionally seen as more socialist, almost communist countries. For example, Hugo Chavez, who was still alive in Venezuela in 2007, Evo Morales in Bolivia, or Putin in, in, in Russia. And let's look at the state quota these more socialist, communistic countries have. What do you think? What's about the state quota? Is it much more than the United States benchmark? Is it almost like France? Well, it turns out that actually they are quite similar to the United States, even so they are perceived being socialist country. They have a state quarter at between 20 and 25 percent they had in 2007. So actually economically quite similar, even so politically they are perceived as left-wing extremists. Um, we can look at some other countries and simply now classify them here, uh, put, them, put them on the map. And what you will see is that there's not really a clear tendency between right wing and left wing and how big the government is. You cannot really see any clear correlation. So let's see how that evolved. Now we are 2012, 2013, we are five, six years later, and the United States government now had a left-wing government. So Obama uh, became president afterwards, so it moved left-wing, but actually the state quota didn't move up a lot, maybe a little bit, but significantly from the global perspective, it's still this absolutely the same economic system. What happened to some of our socialists, for example, Evo Morales and Hugo Chavez? Well, they significantly significantly increased the state quota. So they took some, some previously privatized enterprises, for example, oil production or mining, and they brought it back to the state. And that increased the state quota a lot. It also eliminated a lot of inequality. These were the most unequal countries on planet Earth before they rose to power, and they eliminated a lot of inequality. But now you might say, okay, now they are surely communist and socialist country. They are as socialistic as France with the difference being that France is 
considered being the oldest and one of the most trustworthy uh, allies of the United States. And Venezuela and Bolivia are seen, as, at least at these, in these years, uh, as left-wing extremists, socialists. But if you look at the numbers, you know, there's no difference between Venezuela, Bolivia and France with regard to the state quota. What happened with Putin? He went back to power and he increased the state quota. Well, a little bit, not not really significantly yet. Putin is not even as socialistic as as Europe is. He's as socialistic as Australia. Or he was in 2012, 2013, but still far from Germany, Austria, Italy, and France. Let's look at some other countries. For example, in Nicaragua, Daniel Ortega, a self-declared socialist communist, went back into power. He was traditionally seen as one of one of the main socialists in many of the socialist movements, the man who makes Reagan see red. He was already in power back when Reagan was in, in power. And so he was re-elected president several years later. And when he retook the presidency in Nicaragua, see what happened. Well, actually, he decreased the state quota of Nicaragua. So a left-wing government a self-declared socialist went into power and decreased the state quota. What happened with some others? For example, here in Namibia, it was also decreased, even so it was a left-wing government in power. Uh, Chile, interestingly enough, changed from a left-wing government to a right-wing government between 2007 and 2012-13, uh, and increased its state quota, uh, completely to the country of Dominican Republic, which went from a right-wing government to a left-wing government and decreased the state quota. So that, that's the world upside down. Basically, what I want to tell you that uh, you really have to look at the numbers. It, it's, it can be very deceiving to just listen to the talk on the media, to political talk on who is socialistic and who is not. The definition here is the state quota. If you really look at the number, there is no clear correlation. And, and once you dig deeper into the number and you understand it, you will understand that it, it does not really make sense to globally talk about left and right wing. There is no such thing as a left and right. And the more you study social sciences, the more you understand it's a very multidimensional space. And also cultural characteristics in every country make it completely different. Now, one thing is very interesting and in, in that if you really want to know who has big governments and small governments, it doesn't have to do with left and right. But it does have a lot to do with the fact if you are a rich or a poor country. What do you think? Who has bigger governments? Rich countries or poor countries? Well, you might think rich countries, developed countries, industrialized countries, they have a very developed private sector. So actually, they should have smaller governments. The private sector is so prepared, they should take the lead in innovating and driving the economy forward. And poor countries, you know, I mean, they still don't really have an industry. They need a lot of help. They have a lot of poverty. You know, they need a lot of social services. What turns out is it's completely the other way around. High income countries have governments that are proportionally twice as big than low and middle income countries. So this is not about absolute numbers. Absolute, in absolute terms, high income countries, they have additionally, they have also much more money. But these are percentages. So even in percentages, high income countries, and completely contrary to the fact that high income countries, industrialized countries always have the talk that, you know, the private sector should lead and especially developing countries should privatize and should reduce uh, the involvement of the state and let the private sector offer. Actually, developed countries, they don't walk the talk. They tell developing countries to privatize and to reduce the size of the state. but if you want to have a clear indicator of who has a big and who is a small government, the fact of the matter is that rich countries have governments that are proportionally twice as big as poor countries.